<laughs> Poor Mabel. Pastor Bill has given her a new name, Magnolia. All right. Well, okay, Jake, we're waiting for you to click those sticks together, my brother. <laughs>
you, Lord, today. Help us to understand what, what that means, everlasting, as in forever. We thank you for that today, God. As we prayed over here a few moments ago, we are so grateful, God, that, that we live in a place where it's, it's okay and it's safe. And it's even encouraged to come together and, and worship you. We want to worship you now, Lord. We want to continue to worship you. And, and um, so we're just going to take a moment. And I want to ask everyone just to, just to be quiet just for a minute. Can you bow your heads and close your eyes? And I'm going to ask you to look into your heart and just kind of see what's in there. Is it something you need to sweep away? And then just get it out of there. And we can just talk to the Lord for just a moment. We'll be right back and we're going to go to worship.
sing this song, if you, you want the Holy Spirit of God to be in your heart, all you have to do is ask Him. Tell Him that you're a sinner and you admit that. And you want His grace in your life. If you're afraid and alone today, if fear is taking over, then sing over that.
here. I know it's difficult. I, I understand. Particularly y'all that are watching by Facebook. You may never have never been alone with God. Haven't allowed yourself to be. It's, it's just so wonderful just to spend time just be alone with God. Those of you that say that you go to church out in the woods, well, here's your chance. Yeah. Go ahead and sit down next to that tree and just be alone with God for just a minute.
Does anyone have a prayer today? If anyone has a prayer, I'm going to ask you to bring it forth. Maybe for the first time in your life that you spoke out in a church, I ask you if you have a prayer to bring it forth in this way. thing that you can do in your life is to learn to pray, to teach yourself to pray. Y'all can go ahead. To teach yourself to pray. I know we all pray quietly and in our hearts and we talk to the big guy upstairs and, and um, learn to pray together as a congregation. Really. I mean, we really come together and, and we are a, a, a strong voice. I, I believe that God wants to hear He wants to hear the, the voice of His people. Wants to, am I wrong? Is somebody, would anybody debate me? You'll lose. He, he wants to hear. Since I have been here in this, I've been here seven years. I'm, I'm going to just ramble today. I'm, I'm, I have all kind of, kinds of stuff on my heart. All kinds of stuff. Actually, I may do my sermon. Listen. All I see in this town is silence, and it really troubles me. I come from a place in California. Now, granted, there was, you know, there'd be a thousand people in the room. I mean, the churches were big there. I mean, all of them were big. A little church was 150, 200 people. Um, but I, I don't know why. And, you know, and I, 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 and people say to me, well, I'm backwards. What do you mean you're backwards? I don't, I don't get it. Does, does being backwards mean you can't pray? Maybe it's time to get forwards. <laughs> am, am I wrong? I, well, if, yeah. But you do it. But, I, but, but, but what I'm saying is once we take that first initial step, he'll, he'll keep giving you courage and confidence. And you know what? It's basically just knowing that he's going to do that work for you. So you just finished my comments. Oh, 
say. I, we don't have any problem at all talking at Piggly Wiggly. Excuse me, where's the aspirin? We have no problem with that. We have no problem. We have, we have no problem. In my heart of hearts, I just want to see here as we go forward as a small congregation, whether it grows or not, I, I don't care. If 15 people or 20 people would just pray together, literally, you know, we come together, we come here Monday evening at 5 o'clock, and, and I know you all have jobs and stuff, you can't, you know, but, but, but no, we're here. Part of my job, my responsibility, and my passion is to, is to teach y'all to become lions, not sheep, lions. You say, but Bill, I'm an introvert. You can still be a lion. I've never ran into a lion that talks and dances. It's still a lion. Amen? So, if you're wondering why sometimes it's good to allow the worship to go on, to continue on, is so we will get out of our comfort zone and do something we just don't do. It's there's nothing else in life you, that you have to do that you don't do. If you don't want to go fishing, don't go fishing. Amen? If you don't like to go bowling, don't go bowling. But this is a... And to experience it, and some of you have, um, I've experienced worship services that were just unbelievable. And, and God comes to those. He, not only when it says he inhabits, I'm telling you, he inhabits. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. It really is. Um, I went to a funeral at the Church of Christ down here, and I don't know much about the Church of Christ, but I know that everyone in that room was singing. It was really cool. Maybe that's why they don't want instruments, because they want the people to sing. You, you ever been in one of their services? Mm -hmm. yeah, they're all singing. Mm -hmm. And they, whether they're out of tune or not. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, <laughs> let me get my book. Yes, is that an option? No. Okay. It's the very end, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't want anybody to get distracted with worrying about money. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We could have, um, let me let me rephrase that. Thank you. What's your name? Not what you remember. <laughs> a, day, a day is coming, y'all, where we won't, we will not pull this podium over. It will not be necessary. I, I don't know when that's going to be. Um, I try to be very sensitive to what's, to what's happening. Um, in the room. Um, you know, I mean, for heaven's sakes, I don't want to push anyone. I had somebody this morning that said they were going to... Oh, never mind. Um, a day is coming. Are you okay, Chief? Okay. Everything's great, brother. You're making me nervous, man. <laughs> it happens. There's churches in the United States of America. There's one in Tennessee. I don't know if it's still going on. They got into a worship mode. They went for like a month. It didn't stop. You know? And you know why it didn't stop? Because the Holy Spirit was there. And when you walked through the door, it just blew your mind. Yeah. 
I mean, I know the Holy Spirit is here, but I mean, he was there. Amen. So if we ever come into a Sunday, and it's obvious to me that y'all are worshiping, there's no need for me to come up here and run my mouth. Because it's better that we worship. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you hear me every Sunday. <laughs> yes, ma'am? It has been shown me that it, it's a weapon. I mean, think of the heart attack, okay, the singer, the, you know, the singer's leg, leg, leg of protection, and when Paul and Silas are in the jail, they've just been thrown, beaten, and thrown into, like, probably wasn't like the prisons today, and, and they started singing. They started singing. How in the world could they go in and sing? Because they sang. And, and the other prisoners heard. And God, I'm, I'm, I'm a lost person. So I, oh, I like that song, Road to Hallelujah. Oh, my God. In the presence of my enemy. Oh, my God. And I'm telling you, the enemy fights me and he fights me in the middle of the night. And God keeps putting on my heart. You just sing the simplest of songs. And I'm glad I go by myself and nobody can hear this. I'm out of <laughs> I know, my daughter tells us, like, I sing softly, because Jerry tells me how to sing. But, you know, I, I just, it's a weapon. It's an absolute weapon. So we need to learn that. We need to learn that. Sorry, dog, you scared me. So. You, you. <laughs> Another thing, if somebody in this room has something to say, then say it. I, I, I don't have the corner on the microphone. I don't even wear a microphone. Um, if there's 10 or 15 or 20 people in the room and they're all praising God and praying, you know, bring it. That'd be fine with me. One thing I didn't like about the churches in California, the ones that I attended, is four songs gone. Period. We, we're not going, we can't do five songs. Why, why can't you do five songs? We do six songs. We had another one teed up. Mm -hmm. And had the Lord not taken over there, just for a few minutes, we'd have done the last song. Okay? If you want to sing, sing. If you want to pray, pray. But if I, if I push you, don't tell me you're backwards and you're that's ridiculous. You get into a major jam, the first thing you do is hit your knees. That's why this thing about police officers infuriates me. One of those idiots was in their house and somebody came in with a rattlesnake. They'd call the cops so fast. <laughs> Wouldn't they? We get in a jam and we call upon the door. <laughs> you know? It's like the guy that was fixing his antenna on the roof of his house and he slipped and he slid down and he's holding on to the gutter. He looks down and he goes, anybody down there? Help! He looks up and he says, is anybody up there going to help me? And this deep resonant voice from heaven says, leave and let go. <laughs> he says, is there anybody else up there? That... <laughs> All right. I've said my piece. You're never alone, but the world is increasingly increasingly growing alone. Last week we talked about being alone, right? I said you're never alone. We, we established in Ephesians 3.17, 1 Thessalonians 4.8, and Romans 8.11. We established that we're never alone. How do we know that? Because we are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Period. You are never alone. I even sang you a song. When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high. Don't be afraid of the dark. Right? The Bible declares that we are not alone. Therefore, whoever regards this disregards not man but God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Whew. One of these days, a bunch of Christians here in Parkersburg and Vienna are going to figure out that the Holy Spirit resides in our heart and you'll see a revival. I don't know if I'll be here, but but uh, Michelle and I, I mean, we, we whew, man, we want to go to the beach. Amen. It's going to be a while, so don't worry. 
We reinforced what we as Christians knew already, that God, the Holy Spirit, is with us. Therefore, we can never be alone. And finally, we remembered that for a brief moment in history, God was alone himself. Eli, Eli, lama shabachthani. God, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? in the Bible. You can find it in Mark 15, 34. The, 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 the words that, that shook eternity. The devil laughed. Ha ha, I got him! God says, no, nah, no you don't. No you don't. As a matter of fact, three days from now, I'm going to show you how much you don't got him. As Jesus burst forth from the grave. That's right. In Genesis 34 and 12, I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to paraphrase it for you. I'm going to give you the Bill version. It's a story of Joseph. Joseph was favored very highly by his father. His dad really liked him. And it's because he was, I think he was the only son of Rachel, if I'm not mistaken. Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. Jacob, I have to count down on this. Jacob loved Rachel. I mean, she was so special to him. And she had Joseph. And and Joseph was the youngest of the twelve, right? And his brothers did not like him. As a matter of fact, they, they got to a point where they wanted to kill him. They were tired of this stuff. You know, he was special. He got the special coat. And he got the special this and the special that. And one day, uh, Jacob said, hey, your brothers are out uh, with the sheep, why don't you go out and see how they're doing? Really what he was saying is go check up on them. And the brothers knew that. And before he even got there, they conspired to kill him. Now Reuben, ooh, Reuben, let's have a little bit sound with you, folks. Are you lying? Reuben um, said, no, 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 we can't kill him. Let's not kill him, but let's toss him into a well. You ever been in a well? I haven't been in a well. You ever look down there? Hello? Yeah, kind of lonely down there, wouldn't you say? I would think it would be. So they pitched Joseph into the well, and they just leave the poor guy there. And then they get to feeling sorry for the guy who's down there alone in the well, and, and uh, along comes a caravan and some Midianites and they and uh, they go, hey, okay, well, let's not kill him, let's sell him. <laughs> so they sold their brother Joseph. They, so he became a slave. And you guys know the rest of the story. Let me ask you a question. Was Joseph alone? No. Practically he was. But was he alone spiritually? No. Joseph knew God. He really did. Joseph loved God. I'm sure the other brothers in some way or another loved God too, but not like Joseph did. Not like Joseph did. So I'd like to suggest that the people that were alone were the brothers. They are the ones that know not God. Now some of you have already figured out where I'm going to go with this. And that's a good thing. Joseph represents a Christian. A Christian, listen closely to me, Facebook. If you're watching right now and you're sending up frown faces, man. <laughs> I've said this in this room hundreds of times, so you know, you know exactly what I'm going to say. A Christian is someone who has repented of their sin. Yes, you're a sinner. I'm sorry. I don't mean to ruin your day, snowflake. But you're a sinner need a savior. If you don't think you need a savior, then just call up Stephen King. He'll send you one of his books. Hmm. Yeah. You need a savior. The savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. A Christian is someone who is indwelt, and it you, don't matter how old you are, a Christian is somebody who is indwelt, with the power of Almighty God, the Holy Spirit. Say me, Bill, how does the Holy Spirit get inside of me? It's simple. 
ask him. Father God, fill my heart with your spirit. And for those of y'all that are fire-breathing Christians, the next question is, Father God, anoint me with your Holy Spirit unto action. Unto, you know where I'm going with this sermon, most of you. I'll get there quick. Take, I'll take you out of your misery. <laughs> oh, Bill's going to ask us to do something. I told you if you see a phone number and it's a 949, don't answer your phone. Because <laughs> I'm going to ask you to do something. That's right. Would you rather prefer, choose, desire to be alone with your heart filled with the Holy Spirit or be surrounded by people and things the world and your heart be void of God. Which would you prefer? The first one, obviously. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a German pastor, a theologian. He was known for his opposition to the National Socialism Party. His ties to July 20th, 1944 conspiracy to overthrow the Nazi regime landed him in prison. He was executed in 1945, alone in prison, filled with the Holy Spirit. Prisoners of war. Has anybody in this room ever had a discussion with a prisoner of war in Vietnam or even World War II? You wouldn't believe what they did to people like John McCain. It's beyond what us Americans can even imagine. There was a, a guy, that, a girl, a girl that was in my high school. Her father had been a prisoner of war for like seven years in Vietnam. Whew. Yet a part of you still believes you can fight and survive no matter what your mind knows. It's not so strange. Where there is still life, there is still hope. And what happens is up to God. Even those guys, that's, that's, that's Louis um, Zamperini. Maybe some of y'all have heard of him. Even when in prison, they were not alone. The Apostle Paul, Ephesians 4, verse 1. Might write that down and look up, look it up later on. The Apostle Paul, Ephesians 4, in verse 1. He says, I therefore, prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness and patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Yeah. Point number one. The world is watching you. The world is watching you. The world is watching you now more than ever. Just this week, Michelle and I were shopping at a store in Charleston, and it happened to be a store that had Christian verses on the wall. I thought that was very interesting. The two young ladies were there. I asked them, I, I asked the young, la the young lady, point break, blank, do you know what John 3, 316 is? She quoted it. The other girl didn't. God so loved the world. It's only the son, right? We got to talking. I said, I, I, I need to warn you, I'm a pastor. So if you ask me a question, I'm going to give you both barrels. <laughs> Amen. I'll do it in love, snowflake. She said, is the end of the world coming? Every young person I talk to, my kids, my, my kids, is this the end of the world? Is anyone asking you that question? Then they don't know. They, they might not know you're a Christian. Because it's what's on their mind. Go out there and find out. It's on everyone's mind. Is this the end of the world? Yeah. Now I'm not... I'm not trying to impugn anyone. I'm simply saying that maybe they don't know that you're a Christian. A friend, a co-worker, a family member. 
We have been in Revelation for 12 weeks. Imagine the hour right after the rapture. Just think about this for a minute. You want to talk about being alone. Whoa. You're in your house. Your family members are in your house, some of them. You're with friends on the softball field. You're at the bowling alley. You're working, whatever. Bam! 15 people disappear. There's 35 people in the room. Some of them are your friends and your family members. You want to talk about being alone. In 2008, 70% or actually go backwards the, the start of the 20th century 10% of the southern continents and the east uh, out there the far east, right? Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia 90% of North America, Europe and Australia at the turn of the century, the, first, the 20th century was Christian 90% that's a fact Okay. As of 2008, 70% of the world's Christians live in the non-Western world. That's a fact. So 70% of the, they live in um, uh, uh, South America, the Congo. Do you know that most of the Christians, really committed Christians in the world are in China? That's a fact, right? America is completely post-Christian. Europe has been post-Christian for a long, long time. Everybody running around saying, I'm a Christian, I got a big cross on, baloney. Mm -hmm. It's sad, but it's true. It's true. So why the change? What happened? I, I'll run it through, run, I got a few more minutes here. Let me, let me just tell you what happened. So you're informed, right? Okay, first of all, advancements in technology, sharing and availability of information increased. It started in 1440, this thing called the printing press. You've heard of that before, right? The Renaissance, when the Renaissance came along, printing exploded. They were able to print millions of pages a day in all the different work presses around the world. And by the 1960s, information was everywhere unless you were deep in a third world country and, and they didn't teach you how to read but 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 the, then the internet kicked in in 1969 four universities in the United States of America all turned up hit a button and bam they were all talking to each other voila Al Gore's vision came true yeah that's how the internet came about did you know that it was a government thing Universities got a hold of it. Oh boy, look what happened after that. There was number two, and how do we get to this place now? That's the question. Increased immorality. Tremendous increase in immorality. Europe came, started first. Europe started, it came over to America. We started printing stuff that, that we shouldn't be looking at. That's right, Hollywood got involved. They started making movies. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. Uh, relativism kicked in. It kicked in heavy in the 1970s. Hey, that's, I'm, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy you found peace. But it's just not for me. Uh, I just can pass out when I hear somebody say that. It's just not my cup of tea. Really? You wait till the rapture happens, friend. You're going to be buying some tea. Like, fast. That's right. Relativism. Your truth doesn't have to be my truth. It's, it's completely taken over the Western world. Everything is relative. Go out and talk to a young people and ask them if that is green. They'll say, that's no, blue. You just go, you go figure it out. The Bible was kicked out of schools. Prayer. Uh, in 1963, no more prayer in schools. Roe versus Wade, 1973. You remember that, right? You know how many, I'm not even going to go into the abortion thing. It makes me sick. Number six, liberal thought and progressive uh, became progressive in California in, in, in colleges and universities. Extreme liberal thought. It, it's, it's just true. Just hedonism then kicked in. The pursuit of pleasure. 
sensual self-indulgence. Now, I know that none of y'all have seen anything like that, and I'm happy to say that I haven't either, but there's places where you go, and they're doing some crazy stuff. I hope you haven't been to that place. I mean, I mean even, even us sailors in the military, we had our boundaries, you know? This, this guy, this guy, what was his name, Epstein? Is that his name, Jeffrey Epstein? The, the guy owned, well, you know, I'm in. Satanism kicked in in 1960. Anton LaVey. Oh, it's so cute, too. Read their website. They weren't really worshiping Satan. <laughs> Baloney. It's exactly what they were doing. Oh, we weren't worshiping anything evil except for that monster with the horns and the long nose. And what the heck do you think you were worshiping? Oh, we're just trying to be free. Free again. Independent me. Free again. Stop. Stop. <laughs> really? Anton LaVey is dead. I, I hope he accepted Christ. If he didn't, he's burning in hell right now. Pastor Bill, did you say that? You are so mean, Pastor Bill. No, I said I hope he accepted Christ. I do. I hope he did. I don't think he did, though. A spirituality now is extremely common in the United States and the Western world. You think that Muslims let their little kids be a spiritual? No. Man, they're teaching them the Quran. They're, you memorize this kid or I'll stick you in a cell. 5% or less of all millennials in the United States attend a church. They don't want to have anything to do with it. Today, we are now approaching what we see as anarchy. Isn't that what we're seeing on our streets? Now, I understand it's in small pockets. Portland, Los Angeles. My son said that it is unbelievable. He's a cop, and, 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 uh, and they're on call. They haven't been in L.A. yet. They're in Riverside. It's, listen, folks, it's, it's, there's an election coming up in, what, five months? And I'm not going to say who I'm voting for or anything like that, because I, but I want to tell you that I love the dude's hairdo. Um, <laughs> what I want to know is why does he cut it off over this ear, but not this one? He combs it over that one. But he, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if that man doesn't get, um, if that man, if Trump gets reelected, we're going to see some major issues. And he's, I believe he will get reelected. I pray that he does. Someone once said they didn't elect a pastor, they elected a leader. And I understand that Donald's got some stuff going on. You know, look at this railroad tie in our eye. Amen. When he is reelected, if he is reelected, we're going to see, get ready. We're going to see some crazy stuff happen. I don't think it's going to happen here, so don't worry, Ray. Ray, 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 Ray. You're going to call him Thomas. Yeah, Thomas. <laughs> we're, I, think we're, I, I think we're okay here in West Virginia. I really do, because there's a lot of people with guns. <laughs> so I think we're okay. I think we're okay. <laughs> we as a society, even in small groups, we are approaching rebellion. There is no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. I'm not trying to scare anybody here. I'm just saying it's just a fact. And if you look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, you will notice that the Bible says that a great rebellion occurs, and then the Antichrist is revealed. All right. So can I ask a question now? Are we at risk of being alone ourselves? Ah. Seven minutes. Are we alone for being at risk ourselves? Pastor Bill, what do you mean by that? Well, I guess we can become inclusive here, can't we? Let's be exclusive. We're Christians. In our building, we got supplies in the back. Chief's got water in the fridge. <laughs> and she's packing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cloister, shall we? Yeah, 
We don't want to be around them dirty people, them people out there with tattoos on. We're not, they're not coming to this place. We don't want them people around here. Oh, great, let's keep them away. I don't think so. If we do that, we become the people who are alone, right? You're, you're alone on your own. So, so we become self-righteous, legalistic, and, and religious. And as a Christian, we must become more and more concerned for the lost and the alone. You knew that's where I was going with this. We've got to become more concerned. How do we do that? Bill, I'm busy, man. I got a job. I got kids. I got... I got this, I got that, my back hurts, my knee hurts, my toe hurts, I'm, I'm, I'm suffering from this, I'm so, I got to take care of mom, dad. Ay, 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 ay. Everybody's busy. We're all busy. Are you too busy to pray? Are you too busy to pray each day and ask God to give you a witnessing assignment? I got to thinking about what you shared with me on Wednesday evening, Mary, and, and I, I believe you could have indeed led that young man to Christ. I got to thinking, I, I never saw him except Jesus. That may have been a miracle. Say, I, I, I truly say, Lord, I am lost. Just saying, I am lost. I am lost. You mm -hmm. know, Well, I'm, I, I'm sorry I said, oh, I don't think so. I've known him a long time. You know, I've known a lot of people a long time. Well, basically, that's when you said that it's a God thing. You know, yeah. You haven't had that of an Assignment. You say to me, Bill, that's not my calling. That's not true, folks. The devil's telling you that. It is everyone's calling to study yourself approved, a workman unashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15. Bill, I'm shy. I'm backwards. I can't share my faith. Really? Can you study yourself approved? Rightly dividing. Write your testimony and memorize it. Friends, a testimony does not have to be 15, 20 pages. It can be one page. It can be a half a page. If you've never written down your testimony and you can't remember the day you were saved, maybe it's time to say, Lord, I'd like this to be my testimony. My birthday today. I don't remember. Well, I know, Jesus, I know you're in my heart. I just don't remember when you got there. And there's a lot of people that come up in churches and they, they're six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old and they go down the aisle and they say yes to Jesus and they baptize them and they think they're saved. Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know. But if you can't identify the day that you, 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 you repented and gave your life to Jesus, then today's the day. Whether you were saved years ago, I can't remember. Make it, make it today. And say, today I'm going to recognize that I got saved sometime when I was a kid. And when I got saved, the following things happened. Now the issue, ay, 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 the issue with, hey, get out of my way. The issue with young folks, little ones getting saved is they go on into life, most of the time they're not angels, <laughs> right? They, they get, things kind of go south. They kind of go south. But they can remember that. Your, it's, your testimony is simple. When I got saved, this is how I was. After that, this is what the Lord did for me. And today I am here. If your testimony involves a bad period of time, which mine does, 
I went down the aisle in 1981, but I don't think that I got filled with the Holy Spirit until 1989. And a lot of bad stuff transpired in there, but that's part of my testimony. Write your testimony to everybody next week. Bring your testimony. Somebody write your testimony down and come read it. This, I'm, that's it. Somebody call me this week and say, Pastor Bill, I wrote my testimony down and I'd like to read it. Everybody except Rusty. Michelle, no. <laughs> we know he's written his down. All right. All right. Who's going to do? Don't raise your hand. But I guarantee you next week I'm going to call on somebody to come up here and, and share their testimony. It doesn't have to be long. Do a course in evangelism. You say, I can't, I don't know how to lead someone to Christ. Then do a course in evangelism. We're going to get started again in a couple of weeks with a smaller, a shorter course. One that me and a guy wrote back in 1985 or something. Okay, more news on that to come. How about, how about carry a track? Who has a track in their car right now? Raise your hand. There's one. All you got to do is put one of these in your car. The other day I'm at that mall in Charleston. I know I'm, I'm stopping in 45 seconds. Probably not. The other day I'm in a mall. I'm in the mall and I sit down the Starbucks thing. Hi. I sit down the Starbucks thing and there's a piece of paper laying there. I say, God bless you. It was pretty. It was colored nice. And I figured it was for a snowflake. God bless you. Just come on. It's a... Pastor Bill, I don't have any track. Oh, stop. Go buy some. Go to the Christian supply store. Am I being fair here? Am I being mean? Pastor Bill, you're picking on me. No, I love you. I, I do. After all is said and done, we have to pray together. We got to come together and pray and say, God, Give us a witnessing assignment. Ephesians chapter 2. God prepared in advance for you good works. Do you think those good works are giving people clothing? No. It's leading people to Christ. And you can do it. But we've got to come together. We have to pray together. Study ourselves approved. Do you want to be at your kitchen table with people that you know? And I'm not suggesting anybody is in this situation in this room except me. I guarantee you right now, if my whole family got together and I got raptured, there'd be four or five people sitting at the table. Do you want that? I know you don't. Do you want them to be alone? No. Of course you don't. You're the only Jesus. You're the only Jesus. That, that person will ever meet. You are. He's in your heart. Let him out. Knocking on the door. Hey, Stevie, open the door. I want to tell somebody something. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't too long ago. Hi. It wasn't too long ago that that one of our members here brought someone to church. How cool is that? Yeah, and they're here today. Isn't that awesome? Come come join me, you guys. Come on. Come, let's make a circle. It's okay. <laughs> oh, do I have to? On the way out the door. On the way out the door, there's going to be a table with a plate on it. Put your offering in there. I just want to put a box in the back of the room, but come on, don't worry, I'm not going to bite you, you little squirt. Come on, Rodney, come on, Chief. This is more important than the offering. There it is, right there, on your way out. You give your offering unto the Lord. Notice he says that. I didn't, he didn't. What? Right. Y'all. Oh, yeah, let's turn that off. Goodbye.